Alright guys, first things first, to print your own fabric, we're going to need either just a sheet of cotton or a printable fabric sheet, which literally is just a sheet of fabric that can be printed on using a regular inkjet printer. There's a few different brands that make these, I'll have some links in my description, but in my case, I'm actually going to combine a fabric sheet with one of my 115 heat transfers. My printer conveniently just ran out of ink, so this is how I'm going to improvise. And essentially all I'm doing is taking this full sheet heat transfer and transferring it onto the fabric sheet. To do this, this, I'm just going to place both in a heat press that's heated to 310 degrees, cover them with parchment paper, and then press for 30 seconds. Once pressed, I'm going to take it out to cool for about 2 minutes, and then I'm just going to bend and peel the film away. Now we have a custom printed piece of fabric that's flexible and ready to be sewn on shoes. Keep in mind you can print anything your heart desires on these sheets, so feel free to get creative with it. Alright, let's talk about the sewing portion. One really important factor to getting clean looking stitches is to have the thread match the color of your print as closely as possible. My print is mainly gray, so I picked up some gray bonded nylon thread. So with our new thread color, we're going to want to use this for both our bobbin and to thread the machine. If you're unfamiliar with the bobbin or where it is, be sure to watch part one of this video series where I thoroughly go over all the parts on the machine and how to use everything. This video is going to be more about how to sew materials rather than how each part of the machine works. So to thread our bobbin, we're just going to get it started by wrapping some thread around it and then we're going to place it on the very convenient bobbin winder. Once you start spinning, be sure to kind of hold the thread and guide it so it doesn't spill over or tangle and then from there you can kind of just let go and it'll wind right up. With our newly winded bobbin, remember that the thread should always be coming out from the back, pulling to the left, and then we're going to take that thread and put it through the first hole. Now I wanted to mention that this tension disc is really important for when you're sewing. You'll need to wrap the thread around this disc and then put the thread out through the second or bottom hole. Now let's flip this and tighten the tension by just using something with a flat head. It needs to be tight enough to where when you pull on the thread, there's some resistance. If it's too loose, your bobbin thread might pop up while stitching or the thread will just be too loose in general. So be sure to tighten this as much as you can while still being able to pull the thread out. Bobbin tension is very important in the sewing process. Now let's rotate our hand crank to the 12 o'clock position so that we can load our bobbin to the left side of the metal piece. Then take the extra thread, place it to the side, and close the bobbin portion. Now let's thread this baby. Again, with the thread coming out from the back, pulling to the left, we can start out by putting it through this top hole. Now it's going to loop around this hook and go in between and underneath the first tension disc. That's going to loop around and over the second hook. We're going to ignore the second tension disc since we'll be using thicker materials. So from there, it's going to go up and into this hole or thread guide. From there, we'll pull the thread up behind this metal piece and into this smaller hole here at the top. Now using this wire rod that they included, we need to go up behind the needle and push the rod up and out until we see it poke out at the top. You can loop the thread around the hook and pull it down and out to get the thread through this big metal piece. From there, we can simply thread through the needle and I like to put it through the presser foot and out behind. We're almost ready to sew at this point. We just need to hold that thread that we just put through the needle while doing one full rotation on our hand crank and that's going to loop around and bring out the bobbin thread. We can just use our hands or tweezers to pull that out of the hole. Both the bobbin thread and the thread from the needle should be poking out for proper sewing. You also might have noticed that I modified the presser foot by just putting some shrimp tubing around it and then cutting a hole in the middle where the needle goes. The shrink tubing is awesome because when you hold a lighter to it, it shrinks and morphs around the grooves and shapes of the presser foot. This just eliminates the presser foot making marks or indents on sensitive leather. Alright, now for fitting the fabric to the shape of our shoe. First things first, I'm going to remove the stitching on the swoosh so that I can move it out of the way while we're sewing. This is just one method I like to use. There's a few other ways you can go about this, but this seems to be the easiest and neatest. You don't have to cut and sew around the swoosh. Once that's removed and out of the way, we're going to tape over the entire panel with some painter's tape and then use our finger to indent around the shape of that panel for easy cut lines. Now we can just use a sharp X-Acto knife and cut around those indented lines to remove the custom shaped panel piece. Take that piece of tape and lay it where you'd like on your printed fabric. Now when we cut around the tape, we'll get an accurate shape and size of the panel piece we'd like to apply our pattern to. For the next step, I'm going to be using some leather and suede glue, but you can also use some heavy barge cement glue for a better hold 
hold if needed. Just apply some glue to the back of your fabric and place it on the shoe. Give the glue some time to dry before sewing so that the fabric doesn't slide around when still wet. One more step before sewing. So here's a really cool hack for getting straight lines that I highly, highly recommend, especially if you're a beginner. These pens go on like normal ink, but when you put a heat gun to them, the ink disappears. So we're gonna use this on our fabric to create a line to follow when we're sewing. I'm just gonna draw where I'd like my stitches to go, and this is gonna help me immensely to get straight and accurate lines while I'm sewing. We'll erase the ink with heat once we're all finished. Now for the moment of truth, the sewing portion. I recommend that you guys sew on scrap pieces or old shoes before sewing a final product just so that you can get the hang of how it works. One downfall is the presser foot is a bit long, so it's hard and unpredictable to know where the needle's gonna land next. As you can see, I have a small strip of tape on the end of my presser foot, and I look at this to gauge where to go or turn next. Sometimes looking at only the needle isn't enough, so this marking will help predict the needle's next move ahead of time. Before we start, I'm gonna go over two rules of sewing that will help you along the way. Number one is place the needle down first. This will help you start in a specific spot. Then put the presser foot down second. This will secure your spot. When you start sewing and need to pivot or turn dramatically, make sure to do this while the needle is down. This ensures you're still in the same spot when you turn versus when the needle is up and you turn, you may shift over a bit. So always needle down when turning. Number two is you would need to backstitch at the beginning and end of your job. So you would sew one or two threads, when the needle is down, we're going to rotate all the way around and stitch over those same one or two stitches to lock them in place. This ensures that the stitches don't come out or unravel over time. With shoes, it's a bit tricky to do this, so you can also start a stitch, go all the way around, and make sure to end in the same hole you started with to lock in the stitch. And that's what we're going to be doing for our job. So very, very slowly, I'm going to be following the line I drew along the edge of the pattern. If you stray off the line a bit, you can lift the presser foot and kind of shift over a little to get back in place. Be careful not to shift too much though as the stitch may look a little bit slanted. I would only do this for very small adjustments. You can also rotate the shoe to align with where the needle is going. And remember to have the needle down when you're making a big turn. Again, my biggest advice to you is to practice and really get a feel of how the machine works. My stitches were horrible at first, but I practiced for a few days before getting the hang of it. Go slow and follow the inked lines for really good results using this machine. When you're done with your stitch, you may notice you can't pull the the shoes out. That's because you need to create some slack in the thread. Simply pull from these two spots to create that extra slack in the thread and then you'll be able to pull the shoe all the way out and you can cut both the bobbin and needle thread away. Now for the coolest part which is getting rid of those ink lines with our heat gun. Literally the best investment ever. The last thing we need to do is apply some heavy duty glue to the back of the swoosh and put it back in place. The swoosh hardly takes on any stress so it doesn't necessarily need to be stitched back but you can if you want to. And lastly I'm just going to clean up any loose thread. 